Hello and welcome to another Hand Drink Solo Wine Info video. And today we are discussing Rustenburg's Roussan 2021, which is special for a whole number of reasons, not least of which is the fact that Rustenburg were the very first estate in all of South Africa to bring Roussan vines into the country. And uh, they released their first vintage in 2004. It's pretty crazy to think that they started the process of bringing in the plant material in 1995 and they had to go through a whole bunch of bureaucracy and plant testing and uh, quarantining and making sure that the material was safe and wasn't going to bring weird diseases into the country and then vines die and you have to bring in more. It really is quite a palaver. But they got there eventually. 2004 was the first vintage and they've been doing it ever since. Now today I'm going to talk about what the wine tastes like and then afterwards, I'm going to talk about how it's made. But as always, you can jump around from chapter to chapter by clicking in the timeline at the bottom of this video. So how is this wine made? Well, as far as wine making goes, this Rustenburg Roussan is the vinifical version of Old Man and the Sea. It's kind of scintillating in its simplicity. It is completely fermented in stainless steel tanks and it only spends one month on the lees. So this really is very minimalist winemaking, which allows the cultivar of Roussan to speak uninterrupted. Because like, we all know how annoying it is when Nana starts to speak during the movie and sometimes you have to be like, Nana, shut the fuck up! And winemakers can be a little bit like Nana sometimes because they might pick the grapes too ripe or they might use too much new oak, or they might choose a yeast that boosts thiols by like 2,500% to just make this crazy aromatic explosion. And that doesn't always allow the drinker to enjoy what the grape actually tastes like. Sometimes you just want to let the grape speak. So what are the grapes saying? What does this wine smell and taste like? Well, on the nose, there is a, a lot of what wine people might call tree fruit, which is meant to imply pears and a bit of apple and maybe some quince. But what you're not meant to deduce from the term tree fruit is any citrus. But this is of course laughable because people with normal brains know that all citrus grows on trees, which means no matter which way you look at it, citrus would definitely qualify as tree fruit. But I digress. Alongside the tree fruit, the kind of green pear elements I'm talking about, there is also some really interesting sweet honeysuckle floral notes. And then for me, possibly the most interesting element is this kind of savory, almost vegetal kind of green bean and then spicy white pepper element. And normally you'd find that combination on something like a Grüner Weltliner. And yet here it is in the glass, which makes one exclaim, where'd that come from? Now at this point you might say, whoa, Han, you said this was minimalist winemaking and it's supposed to be simple uh, and it most definitely is not. And I guess, the two things one should note is that sometimes making wine very simply with a very complicated grape yields an incredible result. But the second thing that we do need to talk about is that this wine is whole bunch pressed. But like, what does it all mean, Basil? Well, when you whole bunch press grapes, what that means is instead of taking the fruit off and pressing that and throwing the stalks away, you in fact throw the bunches, whole bunches, into the press stalks and fruit and all. Now, if you see the image that I've shown here, this is red grapes, but I've chosen this just so you can see the contrast. The stalks sit in there with the fruit. Obviously with white wine, the juice would be pressed off and taken and fermented elsewhere. But when the grapes and the stalks are sitting in the press together and some of the grapes have already been pierced and the juice flows, it starts to dissolve some of the tannins out of the stalks. And this is where those green tannins and spicy pepper elements come from. But they aren't just flavor elements, it adds tannic texture as well. So even in a white wine, you can have these amazing spicy compounds and texture. And if you have a quick look across some of the best producers of Roussan in South Africa, like Bellingham, like The Foundry and uh, Ulifansberg, all of them use 100% whole bunch. There is one notable exception, but we'll get to him in another video. So if you remember nothing else, at least remember these three little takeaways. Number one, Roussan has only been available as a bottled wine for the last 18 years. Rustenburg and Stellenbosch were the pioneers to bring it in, and since then it has seen both growing popularity and also growing critical acclaim. Number two, Roussan can be enormously complex even when unopened. Finally, point three, despite being delicious when it's a mere 12 months old, Roussan can also age quite delightfully, just like its blending partner Marsan. So if, say, you are part of the 12 Monkeys office subscription, where you get two bottles of each type of wine, perhaps drink one now and then hide the other bottle away just so you can see what it becomes in a year or two. Finally, 
When you drink this guy, let the wine stay in your mouth for a little bit longer than you might otherwise have done. You'd be amazed at how much more you experience by just letting it sit there for a while rather than just sipping and swallowing. And once you've done that, hop onto the site, leave your thoughts in the review section below. And if you have any questions about Wilson or about Rustenburg, drop them there as well and I will get back to you.